If you're currently in the market for a lightweight, travel-friendly gimbal, or you're in the market for your very first gimbal, well, now is sort of the perfect time. A couple months ago, Zayun released the Weeble 3, and just a couple weeks ago, we got the brand new DJI RS Mini 3. And with both of these gimbals hitting the markets right now, it's sort of the perfect time to look at the two and see which one is best, especially because they're so close in price. Now on paper, these gimbals actually look nothing alike. When you look at the two outside of their price points, it seems to clearly point that the Weeble 3 is a superior gimbal. At a, just a $10 price difference, you're actually getting a lot more with the Weeble 3. For example, on the DJI, you're getting a weight capacity of up to 4.4 pounds. However, on the Weeble 3, you're getting up to 14 pounds. Also, when it comes to battery life, again, the Weeble 3 just sort of crushes the DJI. The DJI is gonna get you a 10 hour battery life, whereas the Weeble 3 is getting you over 20 hours on a single charge. And you might think that, well, maybe it takes longer to recharge the Weeble 3, but that's also not the case. Now on paper, the Weeble isn't winning in all categories. For example, the DJI is actually a little bit lighter because it's also newer It now has Bluetooth 5.1 and it does give you that amazing touchscreen. Speaking of touchscreens, let's actually talk about the overall design of these two gimbals. Now, if you're familiar with the DJI system at all, any of their Ronin systems, this one is going to fit right in minus the quick release plate. Other than the quick release plate, this thing pretty much looks and feels just like all of the other Ronins that have recently come out. You're gonna get a nice grip. You're also gonna get that touchscreen as I spoke on earlier that allows you to dial in your different settings. And this thing does work with many of the DJI created accessories. The only real downside when it comes to the body of the Mini 3 is the fact that the base, which is also the battery, cannot be disconnected like it can with the other Ronin RS3 models. But this Mini has something that none of the other ones have, and that is the ability to quickly switch your camera from shooting horizontal to vertical without changing any of the hardware. Now where no, you technically can't just take your camera and mount it on vertically onto the Weeble 3. The Weeble 3 does come with its own laundry list of build designs that is different from the Mini 3 that sort of gives it a couple legs up. For starters, it actually has a built-in LED light it also has a built-in microphone, and there are some really cool accessories that are available with the Weeble 3 when it comes to the overall design where you can tell these are not just aftermarket thought out accessories, these were accessories that were designed with the physical product in mind. Now, speaking of design, both of these gimbals were designed to be lightweight and to take a lightweight package. However, I decided I wanted to use a system that I figure many content creators might consider, going with a full frame body and a full frame lens. In our case, we went with the Canon R6 and the R6 Mark II with the 24 to 70 lens on them. And the benefit here was this package at this weight and size is going to be very compatible to any other system that you may choose to want to run on these gimbals. So let's see how well these gimbals can hold up with an actual shoot. Now for starters, we decided to first do basic tracking shots. And what I noticed from both gimbals, because I put them both in pan follow mode, was that both gimbals did a fairly good job. Because there was no tilt axis being involved here, they followed really well, the motor seemed fairly smooth, and I didn't notice any of that mechanical jolting going on from either one of the gimbals. So because that worked out so well, I decided I wanted to do a more difficult shot, a low angle tracking shot. But this time I was going to leave my subject in the center of frame and then take the cameras around the subject in order to try to see how well they do on that panning axis. And this is where I started to see a couple differences between the two gimbals. For starters, the Mini 3 is significantly lighter and smaller, which tends to actually make it a bit more difficult to control. What I found was that because it's so light, it's very easy to accidentally swing the gimbal in one direction or the other, even though you're not really trying to. I've said this before when it comes to handheld shooting, but having a little bit of weight to your camera actually makes it more stable. Now, when I use
use the actual Weevil 3 in order to get the exact same shot, I did find that shooting with it seemed a lot smoother. Obviously the gimbal weighs a bit more and it has a few additional accessories that make it a bit easier to get these shots. However, I will say that even though we shot both shots in 24 frames per second with no additional stabilization added in post, they both seem to give us great results. Now when it comes to using most gimbals, I find that using them in most basic situations that they'll all pretty much perform the same. However, once you start implementing movements that's going to combine both your pan, tilt, and possibly even your roll axis, all happening at the same time, this is where you're gonna really see how well gimbals can perform. Now, I decided I wanted to do a shot where I was going to start on the right side, swing to the left, and then have to not only tilt my camera up, but then bring it immediately back down, and then continue my swinging motion around my subject. This is a fairly complicated shot to pull off with a single hand gimbal. However, I knew that this would be a great test for each of them. Now, one thing I will say is that before performing this movement in order to ensure that I could get the best possible movement from both gimbals is that I did a secondary calibration. Now this is actually something you should do before every time you use your gimbal and that is to calibrate the motors. Speaking of calibrating the motors, on the Weevil 3 in order to calibrate the motors you do have to go into the menu system in order to do this. However one thing that I do like about the DJI system is that in order to calibrate your motors all you have to do is hold down your M button and pull the trigger. Hold those both down for about three to five seconds and then the system will automatically calibrate itself which is significantly faster and easier than going through the menus on the Weevil 3. But after a quick calibration I went ahead and started to execute this shot with both cameras and quickly I realized that the settings I was working with on both gimbals was absolutely incorrect which this actually gave me a great opportunity to test out how easy it is to dial in those settings. Now on the DJI Mini 3 in order to to dial in your following settings, you can do this all via the touchscreen. However, in the touchscreen menu, you'll see that you have the options of just slow, medium, and fast. And then you also have this custom option. Now, when you go into the custom option, you'll see that you have tons of numbers you can choose from. And this pretty much just controls how fast that following is going to take place. However, this number is associated to all of the axes. On the Weeble 3, on the other hand, when you actually go in to change this speed, you have to change the speed by the individual axes, which in my case, I actually enjoyed a bit more, but if you are someone who's not really sure what speed you wanna work at, this can definitely take a lot of trial and error. It's not as simple as just having slow, medium, and fast. Because of the nature of this shot, I actually wanted my tilt speed to be a bit slower than my panning speed. However, because of the way that the Mini 3 is set up, this was more difficult to dial in, making the shot more challenging to execute. Now, when it comes to how you want to dial in your speeds for your gimbal, this is all going to be personal preference. However, I will say that the Weeble 3 seems to give you a bit more control on the gimbal itself, but I will say at the same time that the Mini 3s is definitely more simplistic. Now, if you want to see how good a gimbal really is, use a long lens. Not only are you gonna get a beautiful shot because you are truly compressing that background, but also by having a long lens with the gimbal, you're going to be able to exaggerate your movements. And quite honestly, this is how you get that beautiful Michael Bay moving around your subject tracking shot. So to pull this off, I decided to put the 100 millimeter macro lens on both cameras on both gimbals. and. This is not a lens that most people would typically think to put on a gimbal. However, when you see the footage, you'll know instantly why this shot can look so magical. Because of the compression, not only are you getting great movement, but you're just getting beautiful bokeh from this lens. And spoiler alert, this lens is not that expensive. So if you're looking for an awesome little specialty lens to add to your kit, I do strongly recommend picking up the 100 macro. But moving on to how I actually decided to test these gimbals, this lens does have stabilization built in. However, because I wanted to truly test out how good these gimbals were, I actually turned the stabilization off on this lens and I let the gimbal do all of the work. Now, this is not something I would typically recommend when shooting. However, again, the whole purpose of this test was to see how good the gimbals were and not just how good the gimbals were with the right lens. So I know what you might be thinking then. It's clear that the Weeble 3 is better because of the higher capacity, it can handle bigger lenses, and it can do more work, right? Well, 
Not really, and it really comes down to the design of the Weeble 3 itself. See, the Weeble 3 has one major thing that's holding it back, and that is its back roll axis. That roll axis is directly behind where your camera goes, and depending on the size of the camera and the lens that you're using, Sometimes you might need to slide that camera back a little bit in order for it to balance. However, whenever you start to try to pull off certain moves, you'll notice that your camera literally runs into that roll axis, making it impossible to get those shots. And this is where I'm really torn between the two gimbals. I have found that in most shooting scenarios that the Weeble 3 tends to do a slightly better job. Because of that higher capacity, its motors seem to be a bit stronger, which makes them a bit smoother. Um, they can also handle bigger camera packages. So if you are a beginner and you're looking for something that you can sort of grow with and get bigger cameras, bigger lenses, then the Weeble 3 definitely is going to be a better long-term play. However, because of its design, it sort of limits what it's able to do even with those higher capacities. Whereas on the other hand, I did find that despite the overall small weight of the Mini 3, the DJI did seem to actually perform better when it came to executing movements just because it kind of got out of its own way with the physical design of the gimbal. But you know, me going out and shooting with them was one thing. It was a totally different thing when I came back and actually looked at the footage on my computer. Now, throughout this video, you guys have already seen the footage, but at the time of actually shooting the shots, I could just see what was showing up on that tiny little screen on the back of the cameras. It was once I got it to my computer and I could see it on my big monitor that I realized something really interesting. Although the Mini 3 didn't really seem to be getting the most smooth shots, when I was looking at the footage, I was really surprised by how smooth the shots actually were. Now, DJI has amazing algorithms that they've put into all of their Ronins, including that little chicken camera that they came out with a couple of years ago, and that has definitely allowed them to come up with a algorithm for stabilization that is clearly doing a good job when filming. It was so good, in fact, that a couple days after doing my test, I had to go shoot some real estate social media content for a client of mine, and the decision was put on me. I could either go take the Weevil 3 in order to shoot with it, or I could take the Mini 3. And I decided to go with the Mini 3. I went with the Mini 3 primarily because not only were the shots super stable, but also because it had the ability to quickly switch into vertical, this allowed me to get tons of social media content by just mounting the camera physically vertical to the gimbal. I didn't need an L bracket. I didn't have to bring any additional hardware or anything like that. Everything I needed was already in the Mini 3 package. So what are my final thoughts? Well, if you are a beginner, this is your first gimbal ever, personally, I think you're going to enjoy the DJI Mini 3 more because of the ability to mount your camera on there vertically, because of the touchscreen and just the simplicity of using the gimbal. I really do think that this is gonna be a gimbal that you're gonna pick up, be able to mount your camera on, balance it fairly easily, and be able to get out and start filming, which is the most important thing you should be doing when you are a beginner. That said, if you have been shooting with gimbals for a while and you're looking for the most bang for your buck as far as weight capacity, features, specs, then I do think that the Weeble 3 is actually a slightly better bang for the buck. It's something that you can obviously attach more weight onto, and if you know how to dial in your settings properly as far as how much emphasis you want on the following motion within your motors, then you can dial all that in on the Weeble 3 a whole lot easier than you could on the Mini 3. So those are my thoughts. Personally, even as someone who has been using gimbals for many years and has probably way too many gimbals at this point, I honestly think that even for me, as great as the Weeble 3 is, I'm even going to stick with the Mini 3. And the main reason being is that it's a part of that fantastic DJI ecosystem. And right now, it seems like DJI can't do anything wrong. But 
That's just one man's opinion. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Now, if you're like me and you are thinking about going with the Mini 3, then I strongly recommend checking out my friend Styx's YouTube channel. He just released a video comparing the Mini 3 versus the RS3. And the entire purpose here is just to figure out if the Mini 3 is so good, is it worth it just to spend the extra money and go with the original RS3? So if you're interested in that video, definitely check out the links down below in the description. Now, before we get out of here, you'll probably notice that this video was actually not sponsored by anyone. And that is something that I am actively trying to do more and more of on this channel. And that is 100% thanks to the members over at the Creative Fam Academy. Whether you're a member at the Creative Fam Academy just to help support the channel, or you're taking advantage of some of the educational content that we have on there, I just wanna say thank you. Over at the Creative Fam Academy, you do get the opportunity to not only join our community page, have your questions answered, but also you can take advantage of all of the educational content on there. Whether you wanna learn how to shoot real estate, weddings, you wanna learn the business side of filmmaking, lighting, framing, you name it, it is over there. And we're adding new content to the platform every single month. So if you wanna help support this channel, definitely check out the links down below in the description. Thank you to all the members who already help support this channel. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.